Hi, this is Mark Stewart. Welcome back to another in my continuing series of videos on the long-term effects of bullying, how it affects you and other adults years or even decades after you left the bullying behind. But more importantly, how you can heal and move beyond that trauma. This is also a promotion for my upcoming book, which should be out in the next couple of weeks. Names Will Hurt Me, Healing for Victims of Bullying. In that book, I go into a lot more detail than what I can in these videos. If you or someone you know is struggling as an adult with the pain and the trauma that happened to them at the hands of the bullies, I really recommend that you get the book. I think it could resonate with them and help them. Also, maybe send them to these videos. It doesn't cost anything to watch these videos, and it will at least get them thinking about what's happened to them and thinking about how the past has affected them today. And a couple of videos ago, I said I switched over from really what the pain of the trauma and the trauma that the bullying caused into healing. And this is where I'm really going to start hitting it. I'm using a metaphor called the ultimate road trip. And that's broken into, first of all, unpacking the car and then reprogramming your GPS, which is your mind, and get you in the right direction. Unpacking the car is a big one because how can you move forward if your car is full of crap, if it's full of junk and baggage from the past? How can you move forward if the engine is full of sludge? You've got to clean out the engine. You've got to clean out the, also the interior of the car. You have to have room to put good things in and continue on a really fun road trip. Because it is fun once you get past all this. But getting beyond what happened to you is not always fun. It can be painful. It's going to take work. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it's easy. It's not. But it is worth it. I know a lot of people say that when you're writing a self-help book that you aren't supposed to tell people this is work and this is hard. It's supposed to be three easy steps or whatever. I will not blow smoke at you and tell you that this is easy. Some of this is hard. Now, it's not rocket science. It's not difficult to understand. But what it takes is effort on your part, and it doesn't happen overnight. But I can almost guarantee you, if you get the book and you read it and you begin to implement the things that I talk about, within a few months you will begin to see a difference, probably within weeks, if you really start this process. And a year from now you won't be the same person. I know because it, it was amazing the difference once I finally learned how to live. And that's just it. You're learning how to live, not just survive. Now, the next part of unpacking the car is really deep cleaning. This really involves getting the sludge out of the engine. And this is also where that kind of rubber hits the road. This is where it really matters. And this is the toughest part of the whole process. From here, it's all downhill. It's just a matter of you have to deal with this. You've got to get rid of this pain from the past. You can do it. But to deep clean, you're going to have to deal with the idea of forgiveness. I know some of you are going to be thinking, but with what they did to me, how can I forgive that? I, I didn't deserve it. I didn't do anything to bring it on. Well, let's really talk about that. And what forgiveness isn't and what it is. First of all, forgiveness is for you, not for them. Okay, forgiveness is the idea of getting rid of stuff that's holding you back. See, anger and bitterness that you hold in your heart doesn't hurt them. They may be living in the same town as you, or you might have moved to another area of the country, and maybe they are hours away, maybe hundreds and, or even thousands of miles away. They don't know that you're still hurting. It's not hurting them at all, but it's hurting you. Go back to that old proverb or that old Buddhist saying that bitterness and anger in your heart towards someone and expecting that that anger and that bitterness will hurt them is like you drinking poison and expecting it to kill them. The poison doesn't hurt them, but it can kill you. But guess what? For unforgiveness, bitterness, it will destroy you. It will make you see the world through a really weird, distorted lens, and it does hurt you. But you've got to be willing to forgive to release yourself. So I want to first talk about 
the idea of forgiveness because this entire video is going to be on the whole definition of forgiveness. In the next video, I'm going to talk about some of the steps involved in forgiving. But first, I want to talk about what it's not because people have a real big misunderstanding about what forgiveness is. Some people think it's just going, oh, I'm okay. Or what they did wasn't that bad. Well, let's really deal with some of that. First of all, forgiveness is not condoning what they did. What the bullies did to you was wrong. Most people that were bullied that I've known didn't do anything to bring it on. They were simply different. Maybe they had some physical condition that caused them to be different. Maybe they were artistic, especially with guys. If you're artistic like I am, you often are sensitive and that doesn't that isn't supposed to be macho enough. Okay, Maybe you're a girl and you were a little overweight or you had an acne problem and the other girls singled you out for what you were already feeling self-conscious about and used that to beat you up and to knock you down. What was done to you, whatever it was, whatever they called you, whatever they did to you, physically or emotionally, it was wrong. I'm not telling you that it was okay. I'm not condoning what was done. I'm also not going to ask you to justify what was done to you. It doesn't mean that you say, well, they were just kids. No. They were cruel. They were mean. They did it very intentionally. It wasn't something they did by accident. They knew exactly what they were doing. You're not justifying what they did. It's also not disregarding your pain. It's not going, well, it wasn't that bad. If it wasn't that bad, why are you still struggling with it? Why do you still have anger? Why do you still have bitterness? Why do you still struggle with some of the other issues that I talked about? The anger, the low self-esteem, maybe depression, anxiety, especially social anxiety. If you're struggling with any of these, it was bad enough that it caused you real pain and it may have damaged you psychologically. It wasn't that easy to get over. So don't just disregard your pain. The last is not reconciling. You do not have to reconcile with the bullies. You don't have to go up to them and go, what you did to me was wrong, but I forgive you. I'm warning you, don't do that. Because it may not work out the way you think. Oftentimes the bullies were cruel. And they know they were cruel. And as they grow into adulthood, sometimes they begin to mature and they realize that when they were younger, they did some things that were really awful. They were horrible. And they've got to try and somehow get past this. They have their own trauma to deal with because of the guilt that they might carry. And sometimes they don't want to deal with that. So what do they do? They replay that video in their head of all that they did, but then they begin to minimize it. Like, well, maybe it wasn't that bad. And they, they kind of gloss over it. So if you walk up to them and say, you hurt me so bad, and what you did to me was so horrible, but I forgive you, they may react by looking back at you and go, I didn't do anything that bad. Because in their minds, they didn't. They rewrote the past. So it might not be a good idea for you to walk up and do that. Now, if one of them comes to you and asks for you to forgive them, it can be possible to reconcile and to get past that with them. I've had at least a couple of the bullies come up to me and say, Mark, what I did when we were in high school was horrible. I'm sorry. And asked me to forgive them. The funny thing is, I looked at them and smiled and said, I forgave you a long time ago. But thank you for coming to me. You have nothing to fear from me. I don't desire revenge. Thank you for actually asking for forgiveness and help bring some closure that had been lacking. But it may not happen. If it doesn't, it's okay. It's not required for you to move past it. It's not required for you to begin healing. Now, let me talk about what forgiveness is. Okay, It is releasing you from the past and relinquishing your right to revenge. You want to get past it. You want to not have it eat you up anymore. So you are going to release that pain. You're going to get past that. But then a large part of that is relinquishing your right to revenge. That may sound kind of odd. 
you might not be plotting to hurt them or plotting some kind of revenge. You probably aren't if it's been a long time since you left high school. But you might have mutual friends and you might kind of listen to hear if maybe something happens to them and if something tragic happens to them, smile and go, uh-huh, karma. Came back to bite them. They deserve that. If you still have that attitude, I'm telling you that you have not completely forgiven. You have to be willing to relinquish your right. Because in my opinion, it almost is a right to expect some kind of revenge. When somebody does, it's kind of the eye for an eye idea. They hurt you. In a lot of people's eyes, somebody hurts you terribly, you have a right to get revenge. You have to be willing to let go of that, relinquish that right. You have to be willing to say, I no longer desire for them to be hurt. In fact, I desire for the people that did this damage to me. My desire is, first of all, they have good lives. But more importantly, that they realize what they did and that they could teach their kids better. Out of all of this, one of the biggest things that I know has happened is some of them have done that. They have taught their kids to behave differently and to treat their peers differently. And if they can break that cycle so that it doesn't continue, that's the best outcome possible besides my own healing. You have to be willing to let go of those feelings. You have to be willing to think that what happens to them doesn't matter. If they get a Nobel Peace Prize, great. If they end up with some kind of disease early in life, and I had one of the bullies that I happen to know that had changed his life, and he'd made a massive change. He's one of them who had come to me and asked for forgiveness. And he ended up with brain, of cancer in his brain, and he passed away. I believe he was 48. I know it wasn't that long ago. He was very young. I didn't wish that on him. I didn't wish it on his family. I felt bad when I heard about it. Because he had changed his life and he was, as an adult, a very decent person to talk to and to deal with. But yes, he did some horrible things when he was young. He wasn't the worst of the bullies, but he had been part of the group. I don't hate him. I didn't wish him any harm. And I was sorry when I heard that he was sick and even more sorry when I heard that he passed away. You have to relinquish your right and your desire for revenge. There's a lot of steps that are going to be involved in this forgiveness process. There's about six of them total. And I'm not going to be able to hit them really heavy in these videos. But I am going to begin to hit some of them. In fact, I'm going to do one more video and I'm going to hit all of the steps of forgiveness and just hit them on a surface level. I go in a lot more detail in the book. And then it gets a little lighter. This is pretty heavy. But it gets a little lighter because we're going to begin then moving into the idea of reprogramming your GPS. We're going to get into the idea of pointing your car in the right direction. We're going to get into the other parts of the road trip, including the roadblocks that you might struggle with and the idea of some of the rest stops that you might come in need of. This unpacking the car is probably the most difficult part that you're going to face. You've got to get rid of this baggage, but I'm telling you, you can do it. You can let go of the anger. You can let go of the pain. You can be free. I know because I've done it. Do I still sometimes have feelings come up that I'm like, that's really not where I want to be or who I want to be and have anger come up and realize, but then I learn the process of forgiveness and I deal with it right then. You can move past it. Thank you for watching this video. Hang in there as we hit the next one. You deserve to move beyond your past. Thank you.